Hi guys, doing a video today as I suggested I might on um, anti-gas ointment. You'll see these crop up in the videos I do on uh, on respirators. I always tend to show the haversack contents as well and these were carried, these uh, tins were carried in the uh, haversacks uh, along with the respirator as part of the anti-gas equipment um, by British forces, not just the Army but the RF and Royal Navy as well. Uh, and we'll go through them one by one. Um, sort of prog progression through the war and I'll tell you a bit about them. Okay so the first one to have a look at here is um, actually not not an original piece uh, it's a tin I've put a, uh, a replica label on to represent uh, ointment anti-gas number one which is the first uh, form of anti-gas ointment issued uh, alongside British respirators the, the label is based on a 1939 dated tin on the Imperial War Museum website um, it's not the best, we'll be making a better one, the label is actually a little small, although it's it's not far off, um, there is quite a big gap on the original between the edge of the lid and the label. Uh, it's just a little metal tin, um, nothing special that would have contained the anti-gas ointment. Uh, the ointment itself um, is to treat blister agent um, mustard gas uh, when uh, it, when air and if skin is affected you can apply uh, anti-gas ointment to neutralize um, the uh, the blister agent so that's uh, that's the first one I say 1939 very start of the war uh, these were these little tins were were seen in use um, hopefully I'll get an original one day but that's just to start off the the sort of the run through and um, we'll move on to the next one okay this is an original um, glass pot of uh, which would have contained ointment anti-gas number two, it's now empty. Um, and these uh, pots, made this one made in, in white glass, uh, others made in brown, uh, were used at the start of the war. You s and through to the middle of the war, you do see uh, haversacks with uh, these pots still uh, in them while number two, ointment anti-gas number two was in use. Um, although they did also introduce a tin, which we'll look at next. Um, that contain tubes of ointment, but this is uh, this is what you see early on in the war, and probably the most the, the most common to find of, of early war uh, anti-gas ointment uh, pots. So, um, if you're doing a BEF um, display or putting together the the contents for a BEF have a sack, this is the sort of thing you need to be looking out for. So yeah, that's the uh, first issue of ointment anti-gas number two. Okay. So this is the second issue of uh, ointment anti-gas number two. You can see the cameras picked up to this yellow there and decided to uh, to alter the colour. Never mind. Um, the uh, the contents um, are let's complete this set um, are lead tubes, um, which are somewhat easier to to, to handle and use. Uh, than trying to open a cold cream pot and just dab bits on these uh, you actually tear off this end the the this is just the 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 um, cast end of the tube uh, there's no cap or anything you you would tear off um, the end of the tube the instructions are in fact on the back of the uh, um, of the tin and these in about 1940 you see these tins starting to be issued and you can see here uh, and these instructions stay uh, consistent throughout the uh, tinned this is the design uh, of uh, container uh, that will continue continue right the way through to the end of the use of anti-gas ointment um, on a personal level uh, you it also came in large stoneware jars which continued to be uh, to be used somewhat longer uh, and could be you know bleach paste could be mixed up once anti uh, personal anti-gas uh, ointment issue ended but I will uh, get into that uh, later on so there we go that's the instructions on the back there and that's the tin of tubes of ointment anti-gas number two uh, used around 1940-41 we have ointment anti-gas number three this tin is actually empty unfortunately um, but uh, this uh, it's dated 1941 uh, middle of 1941 so you'd see ointment number uh, three in use very late 1941-42 uh, sort of time um, again as far as I'm aware it's just a slight change in the consistency of the ointment slight change in the makeup 
um, as you can see the, the instructions you now get the date down in the bottom corner here um, the instructions are the same um, tear off the end of the tube and so on so that's little grey tin gone from yellow to grey equipment anti-gas number three okay so um, another tin of anti-gas ointment uh, number three but number three A in this case you can see tropical pack which is also designated by the A um, otherwise pretty much the same this one does have its contents I'll get this open one handed um, and as with the other tin you've got the piece of corrugated cardboard packing and then a cardboard insert that holds the tubes um, and you can see these aren't fully painted but you've got the 3A uh, on a grey band ointment number 3A on a grey band around the neck there uh, same principle torn open at the bottom and uh, there were various tests run in the Far East um, regarding um, the effectiveness of, of anti-gas ointment in tropical conditions because uh, of course if you're applying something to the skin and the skin is very uh, slick with sweat um, uh, the ointment is not likely to stick and be as effective so um, this is the first as far as I'm aware of this is the first ointment anti-gas designed for tropical use uh, and again this tin is dated um, 41 uh, late 41 so you'd see this late 41 into 42 uh, and and on I'm not aware of uh, the next ointment is number five and I'm not aware of a tropical version of that but we'll uh, get onto that in a second so what we have here is a rather faded uh, rubbed uh, way tin of anti-gas number five you can't read the five anymore really but that's what it is the blue tins um, essentially uh, well, I've, I've had to fill this tin myself uh, it came empty uh, is there a date stamped in this so I'm aware of some of them have it I'll pass the camera there um, I've put these t tubes in myself they're not original to the tin uh, they're actually tubes of anti-gas ointment number six as you can see in the end there but they're essentially the same as the number five um, ointment tubes uh, in that they're plain lead there's no paint anymore, exactly the same principle, tear the bottom off, etc. Um, and they can just contain the, the next formula, anti-gas ointment number five. Um, I had to make the, uh, if I, I tip these tubes out, I um, had to make this, this insert myself because the insert was missing. I just took some thin card, but that's what the insert looks like. It's just a folded up piece of, of cardboard. Um, and... Uh, I refilled the tin myself to sort of give a, a representation, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's anti-gas ointment number five. As far as I'm aware, there's not a tropical version made of this. Um, the back of the tin, if we have a look here, uh, you can see is dated uh, 43, um, and uh, they also made a smaller version of this that contains half the number of tubes, so essentially um, half-sized. Uh, or is it even smaller I think about that sort of size I can't remember how many tubes it has in um, and uh, yeah they, they're quite uh, easy to pick up uh, number five is not uncommon to find uh, and good for a mid-war uh, respirator have a sack good for the lightweight uh, light anti-gas respirator so okay so now we have ointment anti-gas number six which is in a green tin um, I'm about to get the lid open on this, it's a bit rusted. Oh, there we go, yes I can. Uh, missing the cardboard insert, unfortunately. Again, you can see the plain lead tubes. Um, and that's the original contents. I've not filled this uh, myself. Uh, the date in the corner here is 44. Don't know if it'll pick that up or not. It's rather rusted over. You can see the four there. Uh, so these, these um, 1944, uh, you, you, again, a good... Um, pack to go in the uh, light anti-gas respirator for late war um, scenario um, so yeah that's that's anti-gas number six again just another uh, adaption and another change to the formula and a different type of ointment okay and here we have the second tropical type of ointment uh, number six for tropical use there's no a to the number uh, dated um, 45 the contents are exactly the same it does have its original uh, contents with the tubes uh, oh no this is one i filled myself again but this has the correct tubes in has the number six ointment tubes in um and uh, yeah that's so that's the um the late war tropical ointment um uh, again very unlikely to have seen 
actual use. Well, there was no gas attack, of course, but no, not likely to have been issued before the end of the war. So there we are, number six for tropical use, and there's one more tin to look at, which I'll bring in in just a second. Okay, and here we have the last one, ointment anti-gas number six for temperate and tropical use. So this is a multi-purpose ointment for both the tropics and uh, temperate climes. Uh, I've had to seal one of the tubes with um, foil here. This one will probably need it too because they've burst. As you can see, 1957 dated this, also dated on the back, um, and uh, 56 dated here though, so it's stamped inside presumably the filling date, the tin made into 56, uh, something like that I imagine. Still the same instructions, these were issued until the late 50s, uh, early 60s, when the British Army moved over from pure anti-gas warfare to chemical biological warfare and then the nuclear component came into that in a big way as well. Uh, so this is the last, number six, temperate tropical use is the last personal issue of uh, anti-gas ointment uh, to the man, although they continued with uh, bleach paste uh, in, in larger containers and in a dehydrated form that could be mixed up to treat uh, blister agents. Uh, so there we are. hope you found that interesting, just a timeline progression of uh, different anti-gas ointments that were used by the British Army and uh, the Navy and the RAF as well. So there we are. Hope you've enjoyed, hope you found it interesting, and uh, until the next video, bye for now.